So hey guys, as you can see here, I was demonstrating a simulated golf swing on these sliders. So I have two important questions to ask you. First, why can't my feet stay still while on these sliders? What's the missing piece when it comes to that? But second and most importantly, what is my feet moving right and left on these sliders actually demonstrating for us when it comes to creating more club bed speed in our golf swing? Take a quick second to think about that. So to answer that question about why my feet kept moving on these sliders, I wanna talk about one critical law that we all should know. Maybe we learned in high school, college, or any type of physics or science class that we ran into. And that law is Newton's first law, which is every object will stay at rest unless influenced by an outside or external force. And also every object will stay in motion unless resisted or influenced by an external force. So how is this, how does this apply to when it comes to these sliders and me demonstrating golf swing? Well, let's figure it out. So if I'm on these sliders, first and foremost, if I'm not moving, I'm standing still. So I have no external force influencing me right now. However, when I'm moving my backswing, what happens? Well, now we have an external force pushing us, right? And we can see that by the movement in our feet. So let me get off these sliders real fast. However, if I'm on the ground and I'm standing still, so there's no external force, then from here, when I move back, my feet aren't moving as much anymore. However, there's still an external force, right? What is that external force? Well, that is the ground. So to get a little bit more specific, let's look into why these sliders and having our feet move left and right is so important when it comes to producing club head speed. Well, again, if I'm at rest and I'm not moving on these sliders, then from here, when I move back in my backswing, you can see here, my left foot is moving this way as my right is moving that way. So what that is demonstrating to us is that the external force is coming from this left foot when we go on our backswing to load up on our right. So we see that. And then from here, now we're loading on our right leg. So what caused us to be loaded on our right leg? Well, that is a push force coming from our left. So if we at rest again, and then from here, we go to our backswing, we need a force to propel us to get to our right leg. And now if I'm on the ground, my feet won't move, but you can see the same thing. I'm pushing off the left to get to the right. And then we have our backswing. And the same thing occurs with the downswing. So let's get on these sliders again. So now I'm going back and then now I come down. Now you can see my right foot is rotating this way and my left foot rotates that way, which is showing us now that external force is a push from the right, which shifts us left. Then as we get to the ground, we can see the same thing. A push from the right is getting us to the left. So what this is showing us in terms of importance is that it is not merely us going to our backswing, moving to our trail side, moving to our forward side. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. So what we want to take from this is that in order to get to one place, we need to be prepared from another place. So if I want to go to the right, just like if anything, if I want to move to my right, I'm pushing from my left. And same thing, if I go to my left, I'm pushing from my right. Why is that? Well, it's because that external force that we talked about in Newton's first law 
if I'm at rest, I'm not gonna move. Then if I wanna move, I need to push off the right to go to the left and vice versa. So take a second to think about that and then we'll dive deeper next into how we can apply this to our golf swing when it comes to our setup to produce more club head speed. So hey guys, before we continue this video, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. All the swing talk, all the mechanics talk, and just improving our technique and golf in general, what is the actual purpose? Well, we know at the end of the day is to improve our scores where? On the golf course. However, what do we need to do to improve our scores on the golf course? Well, we need to practice properly and we need to identify our strength and weaknesses to figure out what we need to prioritize to improve our scores the most efficient way. So, I want to give you guys something. I've recently made two ebooks. One, an ebook on how to apply how to apply your range game to the golf course by giving you a game to do daily on the range to help improve your performance, as well as another ebook, a statistic ebook to help you keep track simply of your stats on the golf course, as well as to give you a detailed picture of your game so you can track the areas that you need to improve most in. So, if you want to know how to improve the quality of your practice when you go to the range to apply to the golf course, and as well to have a statistics ebook completely broken down in detail to help you show what you need to work on in your game in the back of your pocket, go ahead and click that link down below. All it is is just both of them are $8, so if you really want to, if you really want to improve your game and see your scores change past just the mechanics, Go ahead and click that link below. So now, to get a little more specific when it comes to applying some of those principles to our setup for our golf swing to produce more club head speed, I'm going to jump back on these sliders and break down two bio biomechanical terms for you to understand. So, now I'm going to jump back on these sliders. I'm going to set up, take my back swing. So we see those feet moving, right? Just like we talked about before. Then on our downswing, we see our feet still moving, right? Now I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna start over and show you something. So here we're at rest, right? So nothing is moving. Then from here, we can see halfway back that my feet are moving, however, my body is staying relatively centered. And we know for the most efficient ball for most efficient ball striking and the best contact that we want to stay relatively centered with our body. We don't want to be shifted too far over in order to hit our best, hit our best shots. So what is that describing when we see our feet moving, but our body staying relatively still, relatively centered? So first term is center of pressure. Our center of pressure is located within the middle of our feet. Then we have our center of mass, which you've probably heard of before, which is within the same location when we're at rest. So when we take our backswing, right, our center of pressure is now starting off from the left and then moving to the right. So here we're at rest, then our center of pressure is left and then moves to the right. And then notice how our center mass is, is still relatively centered. This is the initial backswing. Then we get here and then now we're to the right. Then our center of pressure now is pushing off from the right, right? 
to the left. And then now we get into our transition. And now we notice still that our center of mass is still relatively centered. It's moving forward, but not relatively as much as our center of pressure. Then here's the key as well. Then, so in order to get our body rotating, right? Or posting up on our lead leg. So now we have it on our lead leg. Now our center of pressure actually shifts from the left to the right in order to extend up, right? So we get here, our center of pressure is left. Then from here, as we extend and rotate, now that push is coming from the left then our center of mass gets shifted a little to the right. Then we go into our follow through. So that is the nuance with our center of pressure. However, our center of mass still staying relatively centered going back, moving a little bit forward, and then rotating. So those are those little nuances within the golf swing. What that is showing us, as we see a lot within the golf swing, is that even when I'm on the ground, that my feet might not be relatively moving, but we know they're active. However, my body could be staying relatively centered while my feet is going through all those different pressure changes. So one good way to remember what center of pressure is versus center of mass is when we think of center of pressure, we think of the acronym COP. And we know that spells out COP. So we know that's police. A lot of times when we run into police, if a very dangerous situation is going on, what are, the, what are they telling people or the potential criminal? They're telling them to put, to get on the ground, right? So when it comes to our center of pressure, it's talking about the ground versus our center of mass is the front of our body. So that's a good way to remember the difference between those two. Now, let's go back to what we need to do at setup. Now, since we know in order to get to our right, we need to push from our left, and vice versa. So if I want to get more club head speed, as we've talked about before, we need to create more momentum, right? So we could create more momentum and then that can help us produce more club head speed. That can happen by first, just turning more, the club traveling more, that'll create more momentum. But what can we do to create that momentum just as setup before we even take the club back? Well. If we think about it, just like we talked about, our center of pressure is in the middle and then it starts left and goes right. So what can we do as setup in order to promote that? Well, a lot of times we're told to have the pressure within our feet 50-50, right? However, if my goal is to get to my right, what can I do to help me propel over there? Well, what we can do is we can have a little bit of weight or a little bit of pressure per se on our left. So then from here, then now we can really feel that force pushing us over here. And a lot of times we see that with a lot of the top players like Roy McIlroy, Xander Shoffley, especially with Roy, he, a lot of times he gets here and we see him do this, right? Before he even takes the club back. Same thing with Xander, right? But the same thing. So what I want you to try is instead of having the pressure 50-50 within the feet, make it more about 55-45 or 60-40 so you can feel a little bit more pressure in the left foot. And then from here, now that could be your propeller to get to the right, which will help you to get dynamic because what happens now, get here, then the club moves. So it'll be more like that. However, we can see my center mass of my body is still staying relatively centered, right? So it's just a little pressure change with that setup. And then from here, we can be pushed back. And then obviously we know we need to push off the right to get back to the left and hit the ball. So go ahead and try that out based off those principles and let me know how you like it. Then next, we'll go more in detail of a couple of drills you can try in order to really understand it and then apply it within your own game. So now I'm going to demonstrate a drill you can do on the range or even at home or anywhere with a golf club 
in order to understand and apply these principles that we've been talking about. So go ahead and set up to a golf ball, right? Set up like normal. Then, now what I want you to do is to put your feet a little bit closer, right? And then now from here, all I want you to do is go step, step, and step. It's kind of like a dance. I call it the step, step drill. But as you can see, what this will show you is if you take that close stance, is that here, so we start off the left first, then that left propels us to the right. So bam, then propels us to the right. And then, and then now we get propelled from the, we get propelled to the left from the right to hit the ball. So it'll be like this. So say if I have the ball here, so I'm gonna go there. It's kind of like a mini dance routine and it'll help your rhythm and your timing actually too. But again, the main thing we wanna figure out is that we don't just shift not to our right, but we need to be propelled from that momentum we were talking about and having that external force get us in our backswing. So I'll demonstrate it again so you can see it a little bit better. So having this little bit of a narrow stance and I want you to take shots here if you're on the range at a very slow percentage speed first and then build your way up. So it'll be here, then there, many step to the right, many step to the left. And as you do it, then you take the club back. So left, right, take the club back. Then after that step here, then you go back you take that step back to the left to go down. So it'll be left, right, left. And then go in and hit the ball. So that's a drill you can do on the range with your golf club in order to understand that principle. Now, what I want to do is demonstrate an exercise you can do that'll really help you demonstrate it. So if you guys have any, any, anything, take a like a medicine ball or any ball in general. It's just, to, it's just to figure out the movement so we can understand the different pressure changes. Then from here, what I want you to do is to get low and then what these are called is called skater jumps. What they are is basically lateral jumps but more dynamic. So what I want you to do, start off here, get low, and then as you take the step, I want you to pivot the ball left and right. So let me show you. So you start here, so you jump, skater jump, and then you see I'm pivoting the ball left to right in the same direction that I'm stepping. But more importantly, you can see, so I'm on my left, so I gotta push off my left to get to the right, and then after I'm pushing off my right to get to the left. And then you can really start to get the rhythm once you develop the coordination. But this will help you to apply the principle we were talking about, where instead of here, where we just try to get to our, get to our right and get to our left, if we want to be more dynamic and increase our club speed, we want to start a little bit left and then go to our right and then be able to come back. So again, come here, go look, get low. And then, so you can start off on any side, but like start off here, then jump to the left and jump to the right and pivot with the ball at the same time. And also you can see here that every time I jump, my opposing foot that's coming behind goes behind my leg. So there's no influence of the other foot. So then from here, we can really feel us using the ground better and applying those principles. And, oh Lord, not out of breath, but that worked me up, got me a little bit warm. But also, when it comes to an analogy to help us understand this, let's think about us driving a car, right? We know when we drive a car, in order for us to drive forward, right? 
we need to be propelled from the back wheels and then it uses the force on the ground to push us forward. So let's say if this is the car in total with the ball and then say this part of the ball is where the back wheels are. So we know that the back wheels are initiated and then it pushes the ball forward or the car forward. Then if we think about it, in order for us to reverse, right? This actually make a lot of sense. In order for us to reverse, we must use the front wheels to propel us backwards. So this time, now we have the front wheels initiated from the ground to propel the car backwards. However, if we think about the speed at which us trying to reverse and park versus trying to move forward and drive, they're very different. And that shows us within our backswing that although we're applying this principle of pushing from the left to the right, this is not done, this is not done super quick. It doesn't increase the speed of our backswing. So we want to be mindful of that just like when we're in reverse, we're not moving at 60, 70 miles an hour to reverse. However, we know when it comes to our downswing, then we'll bring up more speed. So that is a good analogy for you to understand the principle of why instead of just thinking about us just moving to our right side and moving to our left side undynamically, we know golf is a sport, so we need to be more dynamic in order to increase our club bit speed and hit the ball farther. What we want to think about is using the ground and the pressure within our feet in order to propel us from one direction to another. So again, basically, I'm starting a little bit more left at setup, and then I push off my left, get to my right, then push off my right, get to my left, and then from there, then push off my left to get a little bit to my right in order to rotate. So go ahead and apply those principles, and I hope those analogies and drills help. Go ahead and do them and let me know how it goes. Have a good day today.